my name is Mike Hurst from Highland Hill Farm, and today I'm going to talk about fall needle drop. The fall needle drop happens to all evergreens, regardless of what kind they are, and usually it's found on the inside, interior part of the, of the tree, such as this is right in here. Uh, usually, all evergreens lose about one third of their canopy every year. Most people don't see it because it's happening on the inside part of the tree. But it's regardless whether it's hemlock, or a holly, a cypress, or an arborvitae, a spruce, or any of the Pisces, they all have this fall needle drop. Uh, usually what happens is, like again, it does fall on the inside, and sometimes when we dig it up out of the ground, they experience more, abnormally more fall needle drop than what they would do if they weren't in the ground. This is due because of the stress they have when they get dug up out of the ground. Since the roots have been cut when we dig them, there's not as many roots in the ground to support the foliage up top. So that the plant does not give, get as much water as it normally does, therefore the plant has to get rid of certain parts of the tree, and that's usually the interior parts. You can look at that and say, oh it's very bad, my tree's turning brown, but it's actually a good response. It's better than having a part of the tree or a branch die off or any like all the lower parts dying off. It's much better than that. When a plant looks at itself and sees which part it can get rid of and which part to keep, the parts that it gets rid of is the interior parts because it does not get as much sunlight, therefore it does not photosynthesize as much and it doesn't create as much energy as the parts on the outside. The parts on the outside also are much more important because they are continuously growing and they're going to be the parts where the new growth comes in for next year. So when you see fall needle drop, it's nothing major. It usually happens right after transplanting, especially in the fall. And you don't be too alarmed by it. It is a natural phenomenon and that's all evergreens have. And sometimes it can be quite severe and scare someone, is correct Mike? Yeah. Like down here, you could look at these trees and say, wow, that's a lot of fall needle loss or drop. And actually, the trees are fine. They will grow through this, and it will, they will fall on the ground and become the mulch for that tree for next year. That's right. Okay, well, thank you very much. And you can see over here, here's a holly, and you can see some of the yellowing there. And that's doing the same thing. It's got some needle loss. Nothing to be concerned about. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. I'm Bill Hurst doing the photography. I own the uh, Highland Hill Farm. And this is Mike Lewis of Lewis Wholesale Nursery. Mike is one of the premier growers that we use here at Highland Hill Farm. We also grow a lot of arborvitaes, but we, we uh, are supplied by Mike. He's right across the street from our nursery and our, our operation. And Mike is, is an expert on raising arborvitaes. Mike went and graduated from the Longwood School in uh, uh, Chester County, Pennsylvania, and he's a, a premier grower in Pennsylvania, world-renowned grower. Now, I shouldn't say that, but that is the truth. Everyone in the Northeast Pennsylvania and the uh, Eastern Seaboard who raises arborvitaes and, and nursery stock knows Mike Lewis here, so he's well known. And he's going to talk to you today about arborvita trimming and how to trim them properly. And these are small arborvitas, a zebrina green giant, and an emerald green. Okay, Mike. All right, what you want to do with your arborvitae is, when you prune them, you want to encourage them to have a single stem. Just one stem coming up out of the middle, like right here. What you want to do is knock back some of these extra stems. Here in the Northeast, we get a lot of wet, heavy snow, and if you have too many stems, they have a tendency to pull apart. Most of the time, they'll spring back, but sometimes you might get some breakage. So what we like to do is take the head shears and knock these tips back just a little bit, which will encourage a fuller, fatter plant, as well as keeping it up into a single stem. In school, we were always taught, when in doubt, cut it out. So you always want to, don't be afraid to take a little bit of, of foliage off the tree. Here, none of these plants' branches will come up into a single stem anymore, or into a multiple stem. You cut them back, this stem will dominate. Here on the Green Giant, we're going to do the same thing. Just This is a fairly full plant, so we're just going to tip it back all the way around to make a nice fat heavy plant. On green giants we get a lot of vigorous growth so you always want to make sure you just knock your tips back just a little bit because they'll stretch out because they grow so fast. 
On the Emerald Greens, it's a much fatter, fuller plant, so you don't have to shear them nearly as hard. Just tip them back, go around the plant, and again, you have a couple little stems developing here. Just trim it back so you just have one stem coming up to the top, and that'll make a nice full plant, which is what you want. Okay. That's it. Have a good day at Highland Hill Farm. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. We'll see you. This is the foliage of a Hellerai holly. Hellerai holly is a green, evergreen, that grows about a foot high, maybe two foot wide. It's slow growing, and it's great for along a walkway, a pathway, or if you want to cover up a utility box. It's a nice evergreen. It's easy to grow. It uh, likes a little bit of pruning. We're here at Highland Hill Farm on Route 313 in Fountainville, PA. And we have a lot of other types of hollies for you. For example, that's the green luster holly. We're in Bucks County on Route 313. And we have more hollies. We deliver plant and mulch up and down the East Coast. As well as boxwood. We have thousands of trees, plants, and shrubs for you. This is our back and many area other kinds of trees, plants, and shrubs. A lot of material. We're growing on a couple hundred acres here and in Fountainville. This is looking towards our and offices and greenhouses acres in Milan, PA, in Bradford County. We deliver and plant up and down the east coast. These are Leland cypresses. The emerald green is a great plant for creating a barrier. The problem with the emerald green is it is not deer resistant. It'll grow to 10 to 15 feet with this real beautiful emerald green colored foliage. Give us a call at 215-651-8329 for your tree and shrub needs. Thank you. This is Bill Hurst. Or see us at seedlingsareus.com. Seedlingsareus.com and our phone number is 215-651-8329. Thank you.